My name is Stuart Pittman. I'm an Oakland-based painter, and I would like to talk about Ron's work um, and start by talking about his teaching because that's where I came to know Ron by studying with him at Mills College from approximately 2007 to 2009. Um, I mentioned that I'm a painter. I think that that's worth noting. I've never done ceramics, but I think of Ron's work as existing beyond those labels. I was so glad to see a large selection of Ron's drawings included in this exhibition. Regardless of his students' chosen medium, Ron always encouraged drawing and lots of it. He wanted us to sketch or draw without reservations or much thought, just get the image onto the page and then go back into it later to determine what's working and what's not. You can discover something really worthwhile in a quick sketch and then extrapolate on it and develop it into a more refined piece. That sounds sort of simplistic, but it really is the essential foundation to so much great artwork, especially, I think, in this realm of abstraction. I find it really stunning to see the difference of Ron's relatively fast, non-committal drawings compared to the extraordinarily rendered, exquisite sculptures. The drawings have smudges and smears evidence of adjustments. It's, you know, the artist reworking the concept of the form at hand. The sculptures themselves then have no such traces, and I love seeing how these different faculties of the brain, fast and slow, work in a skilled sequence to refine what he is ultimately striving towards. It's amazing to see the finished product and how Ron is able to get there from the drawings. It's truly humbling thinking of these drawings as blueprints of sorts for the objects on the other side of the room. I think that this drawing-based approach to making artwork resonated with so many of Ron's students who were in the early stages of discovering their path as artists. Regardless of what you're doing, the first step is often the most difficult, and Ron would want to just push you forward. Dive in, get going on it, don't overthink it or handcuff yourself with analysis. Just put the pencil to the page and keep moving forward. So the next uh, section that I'm going to talk about here is humor. The piece that I'm talking about from 2015, Urine Trouble. I'd like to discuss the contrast between Ron's titles and the striking formality of his work. This exhibit reflects the incredible breadth of humorous one-liners, double entendres, puns, etc. that exist throughout his entire body of work. In my time studying with Ron at Mills, he repeatedly professed his love for a good one-liner, describing it as sort of the zenith of human thought. The, the highest form of art is the good one-liner. And I think it's easy to dismiss humor and jokes as something that's lightweight or trivial or topical, especially when we're talking about art with a capital A. But humor and jokes reflect the human experience and all of the futility and absurdity that comes along with it. Ron would describe titles as this sort of cherry on top, the it's like the last part of creating a work of art where you don't have to, but if you want to, you can throw a curveball at the viewer with a title. And subsequently, you get this mystery or tension between the artist's intent or vision versus the object itself existing autonomously in the world and being subject to new interpretations and responses. So... I guess I'm sort of talking about the difference between Ron's titles versus an art object that is, you know, called untitled number 57 or so-and-so. So you're, with Ron's work, looking at this stunning object where, you know, viewing this, this beautiful form, this bright orange radiant glowing object with this peculiar black form jutting across it. And immediately you're forming ideas and emotional responses in your head and 
as soon as you sort of feel like you you know what you're thinking, you go over to the wall text and you see that it's called you're in trouble. And so your train of thought is thrown for a loop. What does this mean? Am I reading into this too much or not enough? You know, you, you question, am I doing this wrong? Am, am, I, am I misunderstanding what's going on here? And obviously the subject matter is it's sort of funny and tongue in cheek. And I think that there's a lesson in this particular moment uh, that I'm speaking about. And this lesson permeates Ron's work for me. And that is to don't get stuck in one way of thinking. You should always question yourself and your assumptions. And also, I think Ron would advocate to not ever take things too seriously. And I think um, in art making, that's 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 something that's good to keep in mind. Um, as a student and a teaching assistant of Ron's, I was afforded access to him that will forever color my relationship with his work. And Ron is just like his work. He's very exciting to be around. He's extremely funny and quick-witted. And for the people that are lucky enough to know him, this comes through loud and clear in his sculptures. There's the color, the style, and overall just an effortless sense of cool. Next, I'd like to uh, discuss this piece, Message to Raphael, and uh, I'd like to talk about Ron's passion for music and how that relates to his work. It's not uncommon for an artist to say, oh, this piece was inspired by a song or this particular album, or maybe an artist creates a body of work inspired by certain music, but then the next body of work is inspired by architecture. And the next one is about a certain place in the world. With Ron, music isn't a passing thing that he quote unquote likes. It's a majorly significant part of who he is, uh, not just as a person, but as an overall artist. Uh, Ron the musician and Ron the, the, the sculptor are the same, the same one, they're the same thing. Um, he has this encyclopedic knowledge of pop music in particular, and he's always listening to new music and trying to find something new to be excited about. I think a lot of great teachers are inspired by the energy and fresh ideas uh, that their students have. And Ron similarly has that ear to the ground for new trends and ideas in contemporary music, which is great because so many people get set in their ways with what I like, you know, this is the music I like. And at a certain point, they just stop exploring um, music. And I've, I've always been so impressed by how Ron's always digging. He's always looking for something new. He's also, of course, a very skilled keyboardist and songwriter with extensive experience in the recording industry. I've had the pleasure of talking about visual art and music with Ron, and I'm enamored by how he prefers to discuss art objects in the way that most people would talk about music. So there's this entirely subjective thing that happens with music where the song either hits you or it doesn't, and whatever it is, is different for everyone. And, you know, you don't have to make compromises or apologize. You either like it or you don't. But it's fun to think about what you like and why you like it. So, for instance, I can't tell you why God Only Knows by the Beach Boys can bring me to tears, but I can assure you that, that it can. So there's clearly something happening there. If you were to think of Ron's sculptures as songs or LPs, everyone is going to have their own hit single, the, that one that you just want to listen to on repeat. And Message to Raphael, this piece, is for me a really good example of this. The peculiar color combinations with the gold and the purple, these sort of royal, strong, bold colors, the signature Nagel move with high gloss and matte finish contrasts, 
and the heavy bulbous black drip covering the base, all of these come together and really do it for me. So if this particular piece, you know, there's so many unique Ron effects shining in harmony at once, I sort of compare it to like a perfectly arranged song. It just totally clicks for me. So lastly, I'd like to talk about this piece, uh, Beautiful Noodler from 2008. I'd like to discuss beauty as a reoccurring theme in Ron's work. There's a Bob Dylan lyric I always come back to where he says, beauty walks on razor's edge, someday I'll make it mine. There's an implied pursuit towards beauty that many artists are trying to catch or capture. And it's a compulsive sort of chase that's never really fulfilled. When you think you're getting close, your understanding of it shifts, so you keep moving in a slightly other direction. Looking at a room full of Ron Nagel's work is really incredible because you're seeing someone who has mastered coming really, really close to perfection. But you can tell he's not satisfied yet because he just keeps going, making these amazing things with no end in sight. Like a lot of people, I have an immediate attraction towards Ron's work. I, there's this desire to actually be close to the objects, to look all around them or even to touch them. They seem otherworldly or even as if they're idealized forms, like it's not even a real thing in space, but something that exists uh, in our mind. And for me, it's kind of like Ron has rendered an actual real object into the world of what my brain innately believes to be beauty itself. One of the artists whose work Ron loves is Giorgio Mirandi, who sort of embodies the idea of persistence in the pursuit of beauty or harmony. And like Mirandi, Ron is committed to exploring his own vocabulary of forms, curves, colors, textures, and what he would describe as different moves. It's a life's work and the commitment is really astounding. And I think the beautiful noodler is almost descriptive of Ron himself, his work straddling this fine line between humor and the sublime. Maybe that's the razor's edge that Dylan's talking about. And this idea of, you know, the art world or art market or trends or academia or whatever, whatever, you name it, none of that is ever really applied to what Ron's aspiring to do with his work. It's like he's on this mission and nothing's going to get in his way. I really appreciate the opportunity to get to talk about Ron's work. Um, and just, just to get to see this exhibition at BAM PFA was extremely moving for me. Uh, Ron has been a huge influence on me as a as an artist and as it really as a person. And I know he's he's influenced so many people in the Bay Area and beyond. So this is a great opportunity um, just being here and now seeing all of these pieces in the same room. And I really look forward to uh, getting able to get back there when the museum is open again, hopefully sooner rather than later.